Hello and welcome to the Watercrest line for this year's Heritage Open Day Special. Now the theme for this year is Edible Hampshire, so naturally we're quite literally cooking up something good. Yes folks, this year we are doing something a little bit different. In fact, a question we get commonly asked here at the Watercrest line is do you cook bacon and eggs on the foot plate? And the fan answer is no, not most of the time, because the West Country Buffet down at Allsford does a fantastic breakfast and a really good lunch at that as well. Anyway, for today's theme, we are gonna quite literally cook you guys something. And it's not gonna be bacon and eggs on the shovel because frankly, that's too easy. In fact, it's actually cooking right now. We have got a dish in here in the smoke box. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with steam engines, at the back we have the firebox. In the middle, all the hot air from the firebox gets taken through the water through tubes, and then comes into the smoke box out of the chimney. And this is where all the ash goes, and that is where we are cooking our dish. Now, for those of you guys who have joined us, especially for this Heritage Open Day special, first of all, welcome, and this is probably a good opportunity to find out a little bit more about the railway. Weaving through the stunning Hampshire countryside on the edge of the South Downs National Park, the Watercrest Line runs for 10 miles from the market town of Alsford to the bustling town of Alton. Featuring beautiful scenery to enjoy from the comfort of your seat, steep gradients which allow you to really hear the locomotives work for their living, and picturesque stations where you can sit back, relax and watch the world go by. The Watercrest Line allows you to take a step back in time to experience the nostalgic sights, sounds and smell of steam and is one of Hampshire's top attractions. We also run a number of events from events suitable for families like Dale with Thomas and Wizard Weekend to ones more aimed at enthusiasts like our galas and ones where we literally turn back the clock. Just two weeks ago, we had our 50s weekend, which was the first one we've done. But we also do events like Warm the Line, where you can really soak up a 1940s atmosphere. And there's one which we trialed last year, our pilot Steam Illuminations, and you may have seen it on the news around the world. Yes, that is back and it is amazing to see and experience on the train as well. And if you are interested in that, I'll put a link in the video description. And for all other events, visit watercrestline.co.uk for more information. Now, as I said, our food is already cooking in the smoke box, so we need to travel back in time somehow with a little bit of cheesy movie magic. Oh, that worked brilliantly and was not at all cheesy. Hello, folks. Well, yes, with movie magic, we have traveled back in time to a very early time in the morning. It's now seven o'clock, but the crews have already been here lighting up for long before we arrived. The things we do for love, eh? Anyway, as I mentioned, we've got two locomotives on the pit road at the moment, steaming up, ready for today's service. Now, a common question we do get asked here is how long does it take a locomotive to steam up? Well, the truthful answer is it depends on the weather. Not as in if it's raining or sunny, but more, is it summer or winter? In summer, the engines stay hotter for longer because the surrounding temperature is warm compared to winter where well, it does take a lot longer because the engines do cool down. In fact, if you were to come here in the height of winter, the chances are you're going to find a fire in a locomotive maybe a couple days before it's even needed. But anyway, now the engine's steaming up, let's head upstairs to our mess room to talk about what we're going to be cooking today. Well, then again, we could do the mess room or we could do it right here in front of the engines. So what have we got to you today? As I said, we're not gonna do bacon and egg because frankly, that's a bit boring. What we have here is this beautiful shoulder pork and we're gonna do pulled pork with it with a few additions later. So first we need is just a few spices here. We've got cumin, paprika, a bit of salt and pepper. And then we're gonna marinate it in some cherry cola. Now, I'm gonna level you, I am not a TV chef. So this may go horrifically wrong, but then again, it might be quite tasty. 
Now, these recipes, um, they are normally designed for things like slow cookers and that sort of thing. Um, something where you can control the temperature. A steam engine really is not that. Well, granted, what we're going to put it in is a giant oven. It's one where the temperature fluctuates. If you think about, um, if you've made a campfire or something like that, to get it going, you blow on the fire, and that makes it heat up a bit more. Well, the same sort of thing happens in a steam engine. The harder it works, the hotter that smoke box gets. So this is actually going to be quite a challenge. And unlike probably quite a few TV programs, we have not rehearsed this. So we have absolutely no idea how it is going to turn out. Now to marinade, you can do a, use a couple of things. You can use cider, water, or a very nice recipe we found is cherry cola. Once again, this is more designed for a slow cooker rather than a steam locomotive. But let's see. So we're just going to marinate this in here and hopefully it should come out tasting amazing. And as all TV chefs say at this point, it smells absolutely beautiful. I'm so looking forward to this. They say it a bit more sincerely than I do. Well then now, to try and um, withstand the heat of the smoke box, because it's going to get up to potentially 300 degrees in there, <coughs> maybe more. We're going to wrap this in tin foil. So while we do that, here's some more footage of steam engines. I do love a bit of steam engine. So now our bit's cooking, I suppose I better introduce Ben. Now Ben's the chap who was on the footplate who I gave the pork to. He's one of our many, many volunteer firemen here. And um, most of our guys here are actually volunteers. We are supported by a few paid staff, but without the volunteers, we wouldn't have much of a railway. So pulled pork by itself is nice, but I reckon what we could do is add it into a wrap. So what we've got is a, a bit of mango, lovely bit of shallots. Now, I, I'd like to say I am not a chef, so naturally I have butchered this ever so slightly. Fun fact, it's the first time I've ever cut a mango. I don't normally eat mango. Anyway, gonna have this into a bowl with some beautiful watercress. Where the watercress line needs must. Now, you may wonder why we call ourselves the watercress line. Well. The history is actually quite interesting. So the line itself came into being in 1861 when the uh, Alton, Alsford and Winchester Light Railway Act passed. In 1864 it changed its name to the Midhance Railway and on the 2nd of October 1865 it was completed and the first train ran. Now, yes, what does Watercrest have to do with all of this? Well, Alsford is was and still is known for growing watercress because of the chalk streams and the minerals that naturally occur. Now, before the railways, the furthest you could really get watercress was very dependent on, well, essentially horse and cart. And understandably, you couldn't go very far. This was very perishable, easily bruised. So the coming of the railways, suddenly a smooth, fast and efficient way to travel, it enhanced that. Also, watercress can now find itself being sold regularly in Covent Garden, making it as far as even Nottingham. Hence the name, the watercress line. Now, as all heritage railways have their story, and they always have one common theme, it didn't last. The railways identified for cuts in the infamous Beeching Report, which saw a number of secondary main lines and branch lines closed, which is where most of our heritage railways came from. Now the closure did face a lot of opposition from um, locals, the local council, and unfortunately it wasn't quite enough, but there is good news. See, pretty much as soon as it closed, some preservationists tried to save the line and reopen it all the way from Alton to Winchester. Unfortunately, they didn't have enough money to save the whole line, but they did manage to buy the line from Alton to Alsford and the track itself from Alsford to Ropley. 
So just a few years later, in 1977, the railway reopened and started rebuilding back up to Alton, which it reached in 1985, when they managed to make it all the way back to Alton. Now, you think the story would end there, but it really didn't. Now the railway had reached its maximum length, you could enhance what we have, including rebuilding stations, buildings, even adding new ones in. I mean, you'd be forgiven for seeing this, I'm thinking it was an original feature, but it's not. That was something made by our buildings team, and it's right here at Rockley. But that's more to the story. Anyway, we've got this into a bowl now. So all we need is the pulled pork. And as I said, I am um, I'm particularly nervous of this for a uh, couple of reasons. The first one is I've never cooked pulled pork in a smoke box before. And secondly, it's not my pot, so if it does melt, I'm in trouble. Anyway, let's head back to the platform. I'm not gonna lie, folks. My optimism has turned to pure nerves. Very nervous, but hopefully we're going to get something absolutely delicious. Let's wait until they run round after taking water and find out. I don't know about you, Ben. I'm nervous. Do you want to just whack it there? Oh, yeah. Marvellous. That was brilliant. I was expecting us to kind of look it up and go... Fantastic. Spot on. Right. Are you saying that back in? Yes, of course. I'll, we'll start dishing up and I'll bring it over to you. This has gone so much better than I originally planned. So yes, the original recipe was about four hours at about 130 degree heat. And this has been on, what time is it now? It's about six hours at about one to 300 degrees. Ben? It's turned out brilliantly. Has it? Okay, we haven't tasted it yet, but it might turn out brilliantly. But yeah, the salad ones have got a bit, of, a bit of water crisp, a bit of mango in here. A couple of shallots, a bit of lime juice, just to, to add some zesty goodness. As you can tell, I'm not a chef, so I'm not sure what I'm talking about here. But it sounds like good words to say. Oh, so if you hold that one. I'll be the moment of truth for what we try Go on then. And that, my folks, has got seal of approval. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this Heritage Open Day special. If you guys are watching just for the first time and never been here, then please do come down and visit. And we have so many more videos on our YouTube page. Like, comment, subscribe, share, share the love around. Here's something you can cook on a foot plate. Apart from that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. How is it? That is decent. That is. Oh. I love my job. <laughs> <laughs>
pork on its own is all right. But we need to do a little bit more. So uh, what I've got here is I'm messing this up because I've never ever cut a mango before and it's not going well. This is one of the videos that's gonna appear on Gordon Ramsay's TikTok saying, what are you doing? It's wrong. I agree, Gordon. 